Like a lot of freelancers, running my own business wasn't my first career choice. Before I worked in the film industry, I clocked in as a microbiologist. Now I know going from lab scientist to movie maker may seem drastic, but this contrast brings me to the first of the five lessons that I learned while surviving my first year freelancing without a backup plan. I went into microbiology because it was the life that my parents wanted me to live, and I just hated it. But embracing this background as I moved into my new career has given me a competitive advantage. People think biology is all science when it's probably 50% art. Likewise, because film's a creative endeavor, most people would assume there isn't a whole lot of science to it. By tapping into my analytical background, running off to perform experiments with my lights, analyzing the data that I've collected, and then posting the results on socials, I've been able to market myself as excitable and a total nerd for lighting, something which DPs, who are my clients, want their gaffer to be. I didn't just market my strengths this last year though. The real reason I switched careers isn't because I tapped into some unknown intersection in the film world. Uh, I had to change my whole life up or I was probably gonna be dead in five years. You see, I used to be a raging alcoholic in my 20s. Daily drinker, couldn't put the bottle down for more than a few hours type of guy. I watched everybody I knew and loved leave me because I was such a difficult person to be around. It was during this darkest period of my life that I picked up my first camera. And for the first time, I was able to turn a few hours of sobriety into a few days. And the energy behind this little thing wasn't like anything I had felt before. And I know if I wanted to live, I needed to follow that energy. The three year result of that decision has led me to a career in film lighting and my second tip of the video, live your truth. Maybe there was a time when admitting my alcoholism would have been the end of my business, but not anymore. I can tell you that every person I relate that story to has responded warmly to me and wants to help me succeed. We've all gone through some shit, you know? People can see their own struggle in my request for redemption and it makes me relatable. And it turns out, people want to work with people they find relatable, not just somebody who posts the highlights. But putting down the bottle didn't just magically give me the brain capacity to run a business. In fact, Quite the opposite. I spent too much of my 20s not developing healthy stress techniques, so when I finally stopped drinking, I had so much catching up to do. Successfully going freelance required me to pay attention to my mental health at a level that I had never done before. There are so many new stresses to deal with when starting your own business, and self-doubt is the biggest killer of them all. Gaining insight through therapy, meditating and doing yoga, working on communication habits, finding healthy ways to release stress. They all sound like bullet points from a hippie wellness retreat, but using these resources enabled me to keep my anxiety at a healthy level. And because of this, I was able to do the work that I needed to do, and show up how I wanted to show up as the face of my brand on most days. As much as I want to think that I did all this myself though, the truth of the matter is far from that. I couldn't have overcome self-doubt alone. I needed a support system around me. Community is the single most important thing that you're gonna develop during your time as a freelancer. Yes, your network is your net worth is a very applicable if overused phrase, but it goes so much deeper than that. I've been able to surround myself with people who wanna see me succeed and it is worlds apart from trying to do all of this alone. Calling a buddy to ask how they sent an email, dealt with this situation, or to let me vent about a gig, or be a shoulder to cry on, has meant that I haven't had to fight self-doubt all by myself. I remember what it's like to have nobody to pick up when I call, and it has been such a blessing to be receiving support instead. But just beyond the emotional support that I've received from friends, people hire people they know, especially in this field, even if we don't want to admit it. So the more that I've put myself out there, gotten coffee, networked, played the game, the easier it has been to get the next gig. A younger, more immature Tyler would have argued that people should recognize talent and be willing to pay for it. But with age comes the recognition that my competition is all technically capable of performing the job. It's who the client wants to do the job with, and that's usually who they know, and more importantly, who they like. I tell you what though, the cool thing about having first customers when I open shop is that some of them turned into repeat customers. 
And then all of a sudden I started making a little bit of money and getting a little more requests for my time. I ignored the pressure to spend time and money developing a body of work that proved I could do the work. I knew I had a skill and it was going to cost money to use that skill. A chef in training still gets paid for the meals he cooks. I got paid for the experiments I botched and a damn well I'm gonna get paid if someone's making money from this. End of discussion. Now do I do favors for friends and donate my time and experience to help uplift others so that they can get a foothold in this industry? Of course. That's what community is all about. But when it comes to the majority of my gigs, my mindset has been that I run a business first and then I light film sets. If I don't run a business that keeps me in the green, I don't get to play with my toys. Another way that I kept myself in the green was business purchases on the second of the month. It seems silly, I know, but it's so easy to get that big payday, splurge on some new thing, and then all of a sudden, some other invoice you're expecting is two weeks late and you can't pay rent. I swear this didn't happen to me, but it came really close to happening to me. Lastly, buy once, cry once was a tip I followed and did not regret. There are things that I can and did purchase inexpensively to get me going, but investing in quality items that will last the length of my career has already begun to save me money. By walking this balance, I was able to open up shop earlier with a larger inventory while investing towards long-term growth. The more I gave up trying to control things and began to just let go and let things happen, the busier I began to find myself. The path forward wasn't clear to me until I took that first step and realized I could take two more. So I kept walking until I found myself in the promised land with no boss, no nine to five, and an abundance of free time. I hope to see you here soon.